And what we need to do now is to enter a truit environment and just finish building a few more temporary tools before we actually go into building the real LFS system. And that's what this chapter seven is all about now, is going into this truit environment. Um, and it says it shows you how to build the last missing bits. Um, now all the circular dependencies have been resolved, so that's where one package relies on another, but that package relies on the original one. So A relies on B, but B also relies on A, and yet you need to build A or B. Um, so that's what we resolved. Um, a true environment completely isolated from the host operating system, except for the kernel, can be used for the build. So obviously the kernel's running in the background all the time, but all the other packages we've built at the moment so that's GCC included, glibc, bin utils, all to toolchain uh, will be completely isolated. Um, but we still need to have access to the kernel, and this is done with virtual kernel file systems, things like proc, sys, um, our virtual file systems that we'll be um, giving access to in the true environment. Um, until section 7.4, the commands must be run as root with the LFS variable set. After entering root, all the commands are run as root, but fortunately without any access to the OS of the computer you built on. So once we're in the root, if, if we deleted everything in the root directory, because we're in the root, it's not the real root, it wouldn't affect the host system at that point, even though we're root. But as it says, be careful anyway, because you could destroy everything you've built so far in the LFS system. Um, with a badly formed command. So uh, uh, now the remainder of commands have got to be formed, performed as user root, no longer as user LFS. So the user LFS is basically done with. So I'll, I'll do control D to come out of that. I'm going to do echo LFS to ensure the LFS variable is set, which it is. And then we ensure that everything is owned by the root routes that we've created so far with these two commands and then we prepare the virtual kernel file system so at the moment in LFS let's do a little long listing you can see these original directories were recreated we're now going to create the additional ones that contain the virtual file systems so now if I show you we've got those additional directories we're going to create a couple of initial device nodes that are needed very early on during the boot um, all other device nodes are created automatically with UDEV when we come to install that and we mount the first virtual file system with this command here so if we look at LFS dev, which is the first one we're going to mount. You can see those two device nodes we've just created. That's going to be overlaid currently. Those will be there for when we boot, but they're going to be currently overlaid with the system ones, as you can see there. So these are off the host system. And the same things happens with other file systems. So PTS, that's been bound proc again if I show you the proc there's nothing there because we've only just created the directory but this command here will overlay or mount the current virtual file system in the host proc file system into our LFS system and we'll be able to access it when we're in the truth and same for sys and the same for the run directory which points to the temporary file system in some host systems dev shm is a symbolic link to run shm the run temp fs was mounted above so in case only a directory needs to so in this case only a directory needs to be created so we'll just run this command here and if it had done anything, it would have shown us with this make uh, because the V is set as it was on this system. It didn't need to do anything. 
entering the true environment we'll copy this as it is but I want to use parallel compilation so what I'll do is I'll if I show you the um, export we did before I think it was in bash I'll see was it uh, sorry LFS Um, I want to ensure that make flags is set within the environment and I can do this within the truth, this truth command. So if I copy that part there, press enter, add in this designation here. Uh, put a backslash in there as well and press enter and then I'll be able to copy the rest of this to complete the command. And you can see we're now in the true environment. If I do set, you'll see the make flags is set there. Whereas previously, if I come out of this true command, if I do set and look for make, it's not there at all. You see it goes Mac type, um, mail check, man pager, man path, and so on. So it's not there. So it proves that not only are we in the Troot environment because we've got a little troot reminder here, but you can see that uh, make flags has also been set because of this extra command we've put in here. So we're now in the troot environment. We're going to create some directories, some more directories. So to prove we're in the troot environment, you can see the listing here, all got today's date and time on. Just recently, I started about 11 by the looks of it. Uh, sorry, not 11. Uh, yeah, about 11 or so. Quarter past 11, this file system was created. So it's only an hour and a half ago. And we'll just create a few more directories in the root. So it's boot, home, mount, opt, and serve. So if I put that in and do another listing, you can see that's a little bit longer now. Probably just about got a complete uh file hierarchy there on the root but we've got some more um, subdirectories to make so I'm just going to copy all this in in one go it will create about a screen full half a screen full depending on the size of the screen uh, just over a screen so what I need to do is just go back and double check that everything's been created correctly there's no errors yep that all looks fine Now we're going to create some sim links. Again, I'm not going to explain what these do. The, the book does that. I'm not going to dwell on that too much. Uh, a host file for Perl. When we come to compile that, create a default password file and a default groups file. We're going to create a dummy user called tester for running some of the tests when we get to chapter 8. And now we'll re-log in and it will get rid of this I have no name because we've created a, a host name. Oh, sorry, not created a host name. We've created a uh, password file with the root entry in it so it knows about the root user. And finally, just a few log files need to be seeded so that they can be used by the system. And we can now carry on building the final tools uh, in the temporary system. And we start with libstandardc, so we need to change the sources directory, extract gcc, change into the directory and then we can proceed with the instructions as they are in the book. So we've created the temporary directory, we're now going to run the configure command. And compile standard C++ plus 
last of all install it and tidy up Now we can move on to the next package, which is get text. And we only need three programs, but they used to only compile those programs, but now they compile the whole package, but just copy those three programs. So now we'll build it. and install the programs just by copying them from the source to the destination. Tidy up and move on to the next package which is Bison. Run the configure and build it and install it and that's done so we'll go back up and tidy up and move on to the next package which is Perl okay so again this is one with a patch so just put the full stop in and complete it run a configure command and now run make to build it That's done, so let's install it and let's complete. Tidy that up and move on to the next package, which is Python. Uh, one thing to note is that Python's with a capital P, the documentation, I think it is, is got lowercase characters, so you've got to make sure it's the capital P, the archive that starts with capital P, Python. I'll always be extracting the wrong one, and you'll probably find commands that won't work. So configure, build it. It says some Python 3 modules can't be built now because the dependency is not yet installed. The building system will still attempt to build them, however, so the compilation of some files will fail, and you'll see. Um, something indicating fatal error which I just saw one fly by in red but we can ignore them for now um, and those optional modules will be built in chapter 8 so make install that's done
and we can tidy up again remember to delete the correct directory uh, don't attempt to delete the file with the lowercase p and move on to the next package which is text info so got a fix here with said and now we can configure build it and install it and that's done util linux so just make a directory and then we have this configure command here to put in and now we can build and install and that's it So moving on now to cleaning up and saving the temporary system. Um, because there's only a temporary system and to save a bit of space if you so wish, uh, let's see how much space we're using at the moment. So we've used three gigabytes. This says it saves only about 35 megabytes, but if you are tight, it might make all the difference. Um, there's these LA files which can be deleted. Let's see if that made a difference. Yes, yeah, slight difference. Uh, I think these are quite tiny, so I don't know if they'll make any difference. No. And it says the current system size is now about 3 gig, which is correct. However, the tools directory is no longer needed. It uses about 1 gigabyte of space. Delete it now. So we can delete the tools directory. And you can see yeah, it's, it's got rid of exactly 1 one gig. Well, as far as the rounding is concerned, it's got rid of 1 gigabyte. Um, at this point, the essential programs and libraries have been created and your current LFS system is in a good state. Your system can now be backed up for later reuse. So this goes into how to back up. I'm not going to show it this time. I did show it last time. So if you want to see how it's done, want to watch me doing it, you can watch the um, equivalent video in the BLF, uh, sorry, the Linux from scratch 11.0 where I do do this, but um, I'm just going to carry on. Um, uh, as it specifies here, you'll have to unmount the virtual file systems, run the uh, backup as they're doing there with tar, and then you have to restore the um, virtual file systems before you carry on.